The Volkswagen ID.4 and the Hyundai Ioniq 5 are a near perfect match for a comparison test. Now these two take surprisingly different roads to the same end goal. That's transporting you and some friends roughly 250 miles without using a single drop of gas. So today we have two cars, two drivers, and a whole lot of fun to get to. So let's get started. Wait a minute, where's Brett? Dude, really? While you're here, be sure to subscribe to the Inside EVs YouTube channel, and for the full comparison test, check out the link in the description. First of all, thank you for waking up. Second of all, what a place to start this comparison test with easily one of the most anticipated vehicles of this year, Hyundai Ioniq 5. Hyundai Ioniq 5, and we're gonna start in the most obvious place, design. This is a attention-grabbing and eye-catching vehicle. No matter who you are, you just can't help but have a look at it. I think Hyundai needed a compact electric car, no matter what. Yeah. But they didn't have to make it look like this. They didn't have to take all these chances and give it this retro yet futuristic, just different design. The way their design department thinks is just so outside of the box compared to everybody else and their cars benefit from it. And not only did they throw away the rule book in terms of styling, they also decided to really tweak the proportions of this vehicle. It looks like a small SUV and it's right. sized like a small SUV, but it actually has a longer wheelbase than the Hyundai Palisade. It's just an insane, very unusual way of designing a compact SUV. And they also really don't want you to forget that this is kind of a digital first experience because there are pixels everywhere. You've got all the little bits and bobs like on the outside, absolutely. You know, the taillights are tiny little individual pixels. The headlights look like big, gigantic yep. pixels. And then even on the interior, you've got four little pixels on the steering wheel, a bunch of little bits and bobs on the sides, and the seats have some pixels embossed in them too. It's just information technology overload. The rest of the cabin too is a little plasticky in some areas, but I have to say anywhere you put your arms down and the seats themselves, immediately very comfortable. Again, they didn't have to comply with internal combustion proportions, so they really got to design this thing exactly how they wanted. Yeah, flat floor between us, the center console slides forward and back. There's a lot of sunlight coming in, but you can actually change the roof to where it covers up and it goes in from both angles so you can have sunlight or get away with it. it there's just thoughtful touches in here and the interior space is really special because of it. Leaving the spaceship design of the Ionic and getting into a more traditional crossover, yeah. uh, the ID4, what do you think about just the way it looks as a whole? I think it's a pretty smart design. I really like the ID light up front, even though our uh, our video editor says it reminds him a little bit of the IOF Sauron. That's okay though. I think it's kind of a sharp little crossover, but that said, it is very much a traditional crossover design. It's not very futuristic or risk-taking. Silver anyway. doesn't do this one any favors. Yeah. The first edition and the dark blue, I think looks a lot better to be honest, but size-wise, it's funny because the Ionic looks smaller, but is bigger than the ID4. Something about it, like looks-wise, it looks just fine. But obviously, if you want your car to stand out a bit more, the Ionic is way more funky going on overall than the ID4. Absolutely. Translating inside of this thing, there's brown in front of us. And from the moment we got this car, I, I still don't know why it's brown. It looks like an NFL football is right ahead of us. Um, I guess they wanted to mix it up and not just make the whole interior black, but it just looks so out of place in an interior that's otherwise full of black. I'm gonna disagree a little bit just because I think we shouldn't fault people for trying to put some colors into interiors. I, this definitely isn't a class leading design in any respect, but you know, they put in some effort and there's something to look at besides just a sea of ugly black plastic. You do have a problem with the black plastic though, because overall we think that the material quality is better in Hyundai, pretty yeah. much across the board. Yeah, it's it's definitely a step down. You get a few soft touch materials yeah. on the armrests, maybe the front door panels are soft, but everything else in the interior is kind of just hard, natty plastic. It's really kind of a bummer, especially given how much we love Volkswagen interiors from, you know, even five years ago. They were yeah. so and pleasant. Not to mention the ID Buzz, which they took a lot more chances on in terms of how fun they made it compared to ID4. Yeah, you know, if you're gonna use kind of some, some cheaper low rent materials, you might as well give it a really exuberant design. This kind of just feels like yet another crossover.
We are driving the Ionic 5 with the 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. Big boy! Yeah. And this one has all wheel drive, which is an option. That'll give you a range of 256 miles. If you don't need all wheel drive and you don't need the power, you can get over 300 miles with the single motor vehicle. You got it. 256 is what I would call good. I think it's right there in the middle for the common person to say, hey, that's a good amount of range to get me from A to B. The good news is with this car and a significant leg up over the Volkswagen, the charging rate is much faster. This yeah. will do up to 240 kilowatt charging. Although in reality, says our friend Tom Malogny, it's more like 230 is what people are seeing. Doesn't matter, it's still far and away faster than the Volkswagen because of this car's 800 volt architecture. Yeah, and you see that on a daily basis. We it's saw not it this just, morning, yeah, like it, right at the charging station. This isn't just bragging rights over numbers. You actually do get a much faster charge. So if you just need a 20 minute jolt to get to your next stop, you can do it much more easily in this vehicle than you can the Volkswagen. And for people in their daily lives, that is a big difference. Also, you get two years of free charge charging at an Electrify America station when you buy a new Ionic 5. Comparing this to the Ionic 5, the battery size is almost dead on. This has an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's why these cars are so easily comparable. In this case, with all wheel drive, dual motors, the range is 240 miles. One of the key differences though, is how quickly they acquire that electricity. The Ionic has one of the fastest charging rates in the segment. You got it. And the ID4 just can't quite compete. 125 respect. kilowatt max charging speed. The architecture isn't as advanced as the Hyundai. It's just one of the major points you have to consider with this. It's going to take you longer at a charger. That said, the range is very, very comparable. Uh, this is a 2021 model year car, and I know that with software updates, things like that, the 2022 model year already does slightly better in the range department. Another area where Hyundai really went the extra mile is in terms of technology. This thing is just stuffed with screens and features galore. And somebody was cheating off the Mercedes MBUX designer's homework. I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it. This looks exactly like a Mercedes-Benz product, the way the displays are there. And you know why they did that? Because it's great. It's one of the best infotainment setups in the entire industry. So of course you can draw from it. They just took a few extra liberties with how close it looks one to the other. That said, it's great. It does, it looks really nice. The screens are nice and bright. Uh, this this display in front of the driver is packed with information, more so than I think other Hyundai digital instrument clusters. It might be the same bones, but it just looks so much more appropriate to an electric vehicle. Different animations going on, especially when you change from sport to comfort. Like they make the graphics really neat and you have uh, a flow to, you can see where the power is going between all four wheels. You can see when it's recharging, obviously the range charging information. It's just neatly displayed in front of the driver and it makes a lot of sense. There's also the Hyundai 12.3 inch infotainment center right here that matches the driver instrument cluster perfectly. That works really well. There's just one caveat though, Clint. What's that? For whatever reason, they will not give you wireless CarPlay with this screen size. You have to have a wired connection and that wired connection is only through USB-A. So if you have a USB-C cord, like most new phones do, yeah, you gotta go buy a new cord. That's, yeah, there, there's wireless charging. There's two USB-A port three right in front of me here, but that's a weird thing to omit and a category where the ID4 does better. It has wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. People want that. And especially in a forward thinking car like this, that's kind of a big miss. Yep. Other um, than that little kind of initial startup misstep where you got to fish out your yeah, port yeah. and everything like that, this is a very easy system to operate once you're out on the road, whether you're using CarPlay, Android Auto, or the native and baked infotainment system. And that easiness also translates to its safety suite as well, especially mm -hmm. with highway drive assist two which is the newer uh, iteration of that. It's just a button or two on the steering wheel. Yep. This thing will stay in its lane, monitor on either side of you what's going on, slow down and speed up on its own. And with this new uh, system, we'll do automatic lane changes. Yep. It really just kind of takes a lot of the guesswork out of driving on a long trip. You have so much assistance going on that you really are relieved of a lot of that driver fatigue that can come with just everything. A lot of adaptive cruise systems in the industry are pretty similar in how they function, but this one just does stand a little bit above most of its competitors because of how easy it is for the user. Yeah, they really just want to make everything a one button affair. You're on the road, you hit a button on the steering wheel and you're going down the road with traffic just perfectly. It's surprising how seamless the whole process is. 
I'm gonna take some deep breaths on this one because this is where I have some opinions in the world of technology with the ID4. Yeah. And unfortunately, they're not very good opinions. What's in front of us right here was meant to be an iPhone-like design. You can mm -hmm. see it in the layout, but it just swings and misses in so many important usable ways. For one, the touch sensitivity isn't quite there and it definitely doesn't respond nearly as well as the Ionix does. For another, these sliders that they make us use for volume and for temperature are insane and crazy making. During the day, it's hard to use them because you're driving along just like I am now and you don't quite know exactly what you want. A button is much easier to find. But at night, at night, they don't light up. You cannot see where the volume slider is compared to the climate one. You have to guess and then see it on the screen. Beyond that, just to do something simple, like turn on your seat heater or go in and uh, adjust the climate control, you have to hit another sub menu while you're driving along. And then when you're done in some cases, go back and exit out of that menu. Everything is complicated. It's really frustrating. We do have to say one positive thing about this system is that it does offer wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, which is a huge boon. You just jump in, everything's all ready to go. If you're not really messing with the climate controls much, you can just go into that smartphone mirroring and have everything you need right there. That is easy and USB-C ports are nice, but overall the, the usability of the tech suite in this car just has let me down time and time again. And it would be the single biggest reason I would potentially advocate against buying this car. To the ID4's credit, it does have a really robust safety suite just like the Ionic 5. And it's also easy to use. It's just a button press or two away and you're up and going with your adaptive cruise control, which is nice. And it works really well. It keeps you centered in the lane, keeps you distanced from other traffic pretty well. The only thing that it can't really do that the Ionic is able to do is these automatic lane changes out on the freeway, which is kind of a cool feature, but it's maybe not something that you absolutely have to have for a robust safety. Splitting hairs, but it's, you know, not a bad thing to yeah. have as we're looking at these two as such close matches. You alluded to it earlier, but this thing really just kind of provides a lot of unusual features to make this a very comfortable experience. The first being this slick sliding center console. Yeah. It's so cool and it just kind of either opens up tons of foot space or gives you a good place to stash your bags and valuables. Not to mention the back seat is heroic on yeah. space. Literally heroic. The recline on the seat is fantastic. It's easy to get comfortable. There's air vents on either side mm -hmm. too. Everybody, legitimately, all five passengers are comfortable in the Ionic. And if you do need a little extra cargo space, those seats slide forward so you can kind of split the space between the passengers or cargo as you see fit. And that's a good thing because while this has a massive cabin for passengers, the trunk is a little bit smaller than average for other compact electric SUVs. The other area of comfort that this thing just nails it, it surprised me, ride quality. Yeah. There's, it's not on small wheels either, but there's yeah. a healthy amount of tire. The suspension is super compliant. I was blown away by how easy they made this thing to drive. Yeah. It's not sporty in the slightest, but it hits bumps like a much more expensive car. Yeah. It feels like a luxury product. And that's kind of cool because even though this is a loaded model, the base one is probably going to drive pretty similar. So people who go for the price are still going to be satisfied with a very premium experience. Also at 80 miles per hour on the highway, the wind noise is exceptionally well handled. They just kind of went down the list mm -hmm. of, you know, an expensive-ish car should do things like that well, and it does. And that's doubly surprising because electric vehicles have a really hard time with noise control sometimes because you don't have that Other than big birds engine. chirping and waves, there's nothing <laughs> to drown out the noises. Yeah, no, they've done it very well. They did a great job with this car, making it much more comfortable than you'd expect for the price. I will say, the driving experience in this, like in terms of ride quality, it's almost there. It's just under the Hyundai. And that's only because the Hyundai is so darn good. This is just fine for most people coming to any other crossover. It's gonna ride very similar to a Tiguan, so it's gonna feel cushy and it's not gonna beat you up and it'll kind of take some of the harshness out of bad roads. Points for the ID4, it does have more cargo space to put things in the trunk, but when it comes to passenger space, the Ionic is just better. It's just so much bigger, so much airier. In terms of numbers, they're pretty close, but the Ionic just feels a lot more spacious and enjoyable to and drive as a passenger. Really what it comes down to is mm -hmm. you're putting people in the back seat for a long road trip they have more space to breathe and hang out and just exist Absolutely. in the Ionic.
We're driving the dual motor Ionic 5, which means it has 320 horsepower and 448 pound-feet of torque. That is a ton of twist for this vehicle. You floor it and it just pins you to the back of your seat. And just like that, we are triple the speed limit. Let's put it, <laughs> yeah. Let's put it into context for people who are familiar with a bunch of different EVs. It is nowhere near Tycon Turbo or upper tier Tesla fast, but you know what? It holds its own. That torque hits and there is, especially in sport mode, a good head hitting seat back moment. I've, I've been really impressed with the acceleration overall and that it doesn't taper off too mm -hmm. quickly. It holds its own. And if you want to compare it to more commodity oriented vehicles, mm -hmm. this is actually the torquiest product that Hyundai sells in the United States. Huh. So this is a very powerful, very easy to drive vehicle around town. The only, okay, so it has the power. Yeah. The rest of the driving experience isn't stellar. No, you're right, it's not stellar. It's not bad, it's not unstable or uncomfortable or worrisome, but it definitely doesn't encourage you to push the car at all. It's kind of just numb and slushy and there's not a whole lot of feel through the steering and suspension absorbs bumps, but again, it's just not that responsive. And the steering doesn't really change weight too much, even in sport mode, I found out. Like, Absolutely And not. if you do need to rely on the brakes, which granted is not often, they don't have uh, a very confident, inspiring feel to them. Yeah, the regenerative brakes, if you're using the regen, like we'll do right here. So we've got it in iPedal mode and it gives you a good amount of regen without touching the brake pedal at all. Stop. But if you are actually using the friction brakes, you don't get nearly as much of that uh, communication as you might expect. Then again, this isn't a Hyundai N product. I was gonna say they're doing Ionic 5N and boy howdy, am I excited to drive that That'll one. be pretty So bitchy. much so that I just said boy howdy out loud. Performance is probably the one area where you and I disagree the most about these cars. I actually think the ID4 is pretty fun and pretty nimble and enjoyable to drive. You have a different opinion. I disagree with you because the Hyundai has more horsepower and more torque. And in an EV, I wanna go like this and have fun. Yeah. This car has 295 horsepower, 339 pound-feet. That's nothing to sneeze at. It's just Plenty fine. enough. Yeah, it's plenty enough, but I don't know, like you think that this car does better in the canyons, not that this car is something that you're gonna want to drive aggressively. Well, now hold on. So I did take it on a kind of a fun little spirited drive and I really enjoyed the way that it felt. The thing that most impressed me was, even though the steering is pretty light, that's common to both vehicles, you actually do get a little bit of grittiness and a little bit of feedback through the wheel. So when you are driving around a corner, you can actually kind of tell what the road surface is going on beneath you. That's not common for EVs, and that's where this gets the most points for me. It kind of feels like a Mark IV Volkswagen, kind of a return to form of this fun, Autobahn-friendly kind of driving experience. The Hyundai is so numb overall and what it gives you that I, I can see the argument. And it's a bit controversial that the car with more horsepower, more torque, loses in the performance category, but to Volkswagen's credit, they tune this thing in a way that is a little bit better of a driver's car. Definitely. And the other big benefit that the Hyundai has beyond its torque is that you also don't really need to use the brake pedal very much. So this will slow down. It'll regen quite a bit when you put it in B mode, um, but it doesn't do a full one pedal driving experience like the Ionic 5 does. My thing with EVs, not everybody wants uh, full one pedal driving, but I want the option of it. I like it as a driver. If you don't, that's fine. No problem to me, but at least you have the option to never rely on the brakes. The ID4 will not come to a full stop on its own. It'll cruise to like two miles per hour, but you have to put your foot on the brake to get it to completely stop. And I think that that's wrong. They should fix that with an OTA. And in the Ionics credit, you have actually four different levels of of regenerative yeah, braking from zero the and then, to yeah. full one pedal drive. And so if you aren't one of the people that really likes that, you can kind of just dial in exactly the amount of coasting that you want. So I, I have to agree with you there. I wish this had one pedal drive in the same way. The final matter to discuss between these two is pricing. The 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5 SE starts at $44,000 plus $1,250 destination. But our tester was a fully loaded limited all-wheel drive example with a $1,000 coat of matte paint and some floor mats. With an as-tested price of $56,920, the Ioniq 5 certainly is not cheap but Hyundai does give you a lot for the money. Starting at $41,230 plus $1,195 for destination, the Volkswagen ID.4 undercuts the Hyundai on price. 
This test car checks in at $50,870, including all of its options like two-tone paint and 20-inch wheels. That's roughly six grand less than the Hyundai, and while that is a decent advantage, the Volkswagen also packs less content for the money. Ultimately, we would rather pay the extra cash and get the added features of the Ionic 5 Limited to say nothing of its longer range and faster charge rate. As equipped, you pay a little more, you get a little more. The Hyundai Ionic 5 is the better EV. The ID4 definitely does some things well, but ultimately the Hyundai charges faster and has a longer range, and that's why it's our pick. Thanks for watching.